up loves, welcome or welcome back to my channel and thank you for tuning in to my reality. My name is Aaliyah, I have a baby, you can hear her. I am a 20 year old mother and soon to be wife and here on my channel we have been doing a lot. We've been going on vacations, literally a bunch of things. We've been throwing parties, setting goals, achieving goals together, getting new equipment together, sharing our life experiences together. And within all that, I had to come back to the one thing that my subscribers have asked me for, and that is cooking videos. So in today's video, we are going to be a cooking video. I personally don't think I'm like a chef or anything like that, so I'm not going to be instructing everything that I do. In the description down below, I'm going to leave the Pinterest link to the recipe that I followed the first time. I don't really follow a recipe anymore. I kind of just do what as I please. Not only are we going to be cooking, I am going to be telling you guys a story time that's pretty crazy. It's a wild one, honestly, and I'm kind of nervous to even share this experience. But honestly, it changed my mindset a lot after this incident happened. I went from like the dream job that I've always thought that I was going to have, like as a kid, like I set this dream job in place for myself. I wanted to still pursue that dream job to complete completely just leaving that field like I don't like I I can't but I'm gonna start cooking in today's video we are making melt in your mouth chicken we are also going to be making some asparagus and then we're gonna be making some pasta along the side of that okay so what I really wanted to be was a caregiver and it started at a really young age for me, so my Nana used to take me to this thing called telecare with her. That's pretty much where it started as far as I can remember. Other than like taking care of elderly people that were around me and like in my family, always helping out around me um, in any situation. Like I was just always the kid that was gonna be helping the adults, right? At telecare, basically we called the elderly people in the morning to make sure that they were okay that day, see what they had going on. Basically just like checking in every single um, time we went there, like we were just checking on them. My Nana always had like a buddy on her side, so anytime she was going to be with any of her buddies, she would bring me along with her. I ended up really falling in love with not only the people that she would always bring me around, but just the feeling that I got when I would help and be there for an elderly person. I got this really strong attachment. I don't even really know how it happened, but I got this really strong attachment just feeling like elderly people, they've already lived a full life. They deserve someone to nicely take care of them. And when I was going to my Nana sometimes in the convalescent hospitals and stuff, I would definitely see people be mistreated and I didn't like it. And that's pretty much why I wanted to own slash manage my own convalescent home where I could have three to four clients and have people taking care of them the right way. So that was my idea of my dream job when I was younger. And that's pretty much how I got that idea, hanging out with my Nana all the time. I'm really grateful for it. I feel like she plays a big part of why I am the way I am today. Okay, so fast forward. So I graduated high school and this job was going to be my third job that I applied for. So I ended up going and applying for this job at the local day program for disabled adults. And when I went to go do like the application process, it wasn't that long. It was mainly like a background check, drug test type of thing. It wasn't too much of like learning anything or anything like that. That was, there was like a couple of courses that we had to go through, but for one, all the courses that I ever took from that job were outdated. So the hiring process was pretty easy, which I was, which now looking back at it, I'm very surprised at because of the amount of work and things that I actually ended up doing at the job. So I ended up going to the site where I was located. I actually really, really liked the people there. The clients were all super, super nice. It did take me by surprise when I first got in there because to start with, it was very intimidating because like I said, I always wanted to work with elderly people. I hadn't had any history with disabled adults. So it was kind of new to me. I was pretty, like I knew what I was walking into, but it was still intimidating because for one, I'm a really small female. 
and a lot of the guys in there are so much bigger than me and then when you walk into a program like that be an instructor they come at you with like oh you have to be the careful for this person and this person and this person and this person and this person has this behavior and it's like a lot on your first day and like even your first week and just getting to know everybody and remembering what behaviors are with what and then there's also certain policies that you have to remember so it's just like a lot it was a lot at first but i ended up really really liking it and i started bonding with a couple people at the job which is really good for me so i'm at the site i'm enjoying my site or whatever but i am doing things that i feel like i should have got more guidance on or i, sh I just feel like i should have been taught more about it there was like brief trainings like i said but i was doing things like changing feeding tubes out of stomach and that was the number one thing for me where i was like oh my gosh i feel like i shouldn't be doing this i feel like i'm not trained enough for this um i don't know how they expect me to do this like i don't know it just it just didn't feel right i felt like i needed more training on top of that i was changing people at least two times a day taking people to the bathroom dealing with behavioral issues as in hitting spitting making a mess um cussing just like a bunch of different things i had a couple wheelchair clients i'm just trying to give you guys a feel for the program like the kind of the kind of interactions that were there i really did enjoy working at the program but there's a lot of things that i felt like needed to change and that's why i could not keep working there and I'll get to more of like the incident itself but basically I'm working there there's a bunch of things going on all the time and the program is pretty structured people come in from all different places from their own homes some of them are in facilities so it's like it's just a lot going on if you could imagine people that already can't advocate for themselves being with people that aren't even their family and also don't want to advocate for them if you know what I mean like there's just there's a lot going on, there's a lot of guessing, miscommunication, and, and important things that I would always see, and I just wish didn't happen. That was just my perspective of like, a couple weeks, a couple months, some things were just like, mm, maybe that shouldn't happen that way, or dang, I wish we didn't have to do that that way, because that makes these clients upset. It was just a bunch of things that, a bunch of rules that were already set in place, like I said, that felt very aged, and that not all the time like helped the clients. Okay, so I'm working at this program for a while, and at first they had me look like a super easy group, but then I eventually got moved into a room that had one wheelchair and two behavioral clients in it. Now, when I say behavioral clients, I mean there's ratios for how many instructors can be with a client. So, one instructor per three clients, okay? So, one instructor, as in me, per three adults that I'm working with, right? I would go up into a room with a girl that was a one-on-one. -on -one. It was supposed to be me and her, and then there was another girl in there, and her name in this story is going to be Meredith. So Meredith was also in my room, and she was a very behavioral person. Like she, there was a lot of things that she would do to get attention and things like that things of that nature i'm gonna explain more of like the things that she did but basically i got put into this room with two other instructors and six clients including the two that were more so behavioral and a wheelchair so i'm in this room and i'm with meredith and the type of things that meredith would do was like slight hitting um cussing at people spitting at people she would like go in the bathroom and make a mess put feces places um she would like run around the building i remember like the first or second day i ever came to the program i remember watching an instructor chase her around the building um she's run outside a couple times including on me and i had to chase her out in the public um which was not fun <laughs> but um so that's what i mean when i say behavioral things things like that um she also had a period of time where she would just strip like take off all her clothes in the middle of everything it was a lot of attention seeking stuff and i was okay with working with her because i felt as if she did have a rough background and i kind of sympathized with her and my boss really knew that i was more of like one of the cool calm collective people i can handle that i will be patient with her i don't mind all that so 
I got paired with her a couple of times and that's just like a little bit about how she actually like was. So every week at the program, there's scheduled days for everything and once a week we go to the library. And me and the other instructor that were paired with Meredith would take turns with her and the other girl that I worked with that um, I was super, super close with, more of like an adult um, baby, you would say. I took care of her and taught her as she was more so of like a toddler instead of an adult because that was where her mindset was and that's what I was instructed to do. So me and the other instructor would switch off here and there. So I got my chicken all lathered with our make sure that we made and then I'm gonna do the bacon and asparagus going out on Wednesdays because like I said Meredith was a two-on-one so you needed two people to be with her because she she had behaviors now Meredith was on the list where they weren't allowed to go out because of her behavior she was on that list now one of her guardians actually complained about it and was saying that it was unfair that she didn't get to go out. And I'll say this firsthand. The reason why she wasn't allowed to go out is because no one can control her behaviors except for her. She was a disabled adult. She had, her, she had some mental problems. However, she was a very intelligent and honestly very bright when she wasn't having her behaviors. You know what I mean? Like she was a very intelligent person. She just really wanted attention. She had been through a lot. At the program, they asked us. They, well, they didn't even ask us. They pretty much told us her legal guardians want her to go out, so we're going to try taking her out. Even though she had been having behaviors, she's still doing everything that she had always done to not earn going out of the building. But they decided that we had to take her out anyways. And we were like, okay, let's. we're just going to make the best out of it. Out of it. And we tried a couple of times. Now, one time we were going to the library and guess whose day it was to go to the library? Mine. I get everybody ready to go to the library. Well, first, okay, let me just start off. I came inside that day having a great day. Like I remember that I was just in a really good mood that day. It was my library day. Library days at program were like everything for me because it was away from everybody. It was more so of a meditation time. And usually when I went to the library, I went with the more calm clients. And so I always had a good time at the library. We would do things like library, movies, um, work sites. We went shopping. We would take them out to eat every day for lunch. So we did like a lot of out of program activities. We were driving them around in our cars or taking bus that they provided. I walk in that day and I go into the program and I look on the board and I see that I'm going to the library. I'm like, cool, I'm going to the library. Then, um, Meredith was not even put on the board yet. My boss was like, she needs to go because her guardians have complained about it and she needs to go and try. So they put her on the board. I'm like, okay, whatever, we're gonna make the best out of this. I'm gonna take you to the library with me. It's gonna be good. I was telling my boss, like, I got this. We're fine, it's okay, everything's gonna be fine. And... It didn't end up turning out fine. Um, Meredith does end up getting kicked out of the program at the end of the story, so we'll just leave that there. I get everybody ready to go to the library. We get in the bus. One other instructor, the bus driver, six clients and two wheelchair clients, if that makes sense. So we got eight clients with us, two instructors and a bus driver. I have Meredith with me and my other girl that I was super close with that's more behavioral plus two physical wheelchairs that we have to push around. So there was a lot on us just for us being three and every time we would have to go on an outing, it was always understaffed. They never had enough staff, it felt like, and it was always like stressful. You're just always stressed when you have to take clients out by yourself, small amount of other instructors. It's just better to have more people, obviously. We go to the library, we get into the library, we're sitting down, everyone's chilling. Um, we got everything under control. There's nothing going on. Our clients are being awesome. And basically, we're just chilling, right? A couple minutes go by. I look over and I see Miss Meredith with her hands in her pants. Now, this wasn't too alarming for me because, like I said, she would often do things like strip, like take off all of her clothes or um, just anything really to get attention. So, she would usually put her hands in her pants so that someone would tell her to take her hands out of her pants. First of all, I tried to direct her to a book. I was like, Meredith, 
read the book that you're reading, you know, like trying to get her like distracted from what she was doing. That didn't work. I tried to ask her a couple of times and obviously we're in the library so you can't get loud. And every time I would ask her, she would laugh. This was another one of her behaviors where she would literally just laugh at you if she was getting in trouble. She's laughing so I'm like, okay, this is getting to be too much. I stopped asking her to, to take her hands out of her pants because I'm like, okay, obviously that's making her want to do it even more and get loud. So I tried to just ignore her for a little bit because sometimes that would also work. I tried to do this and it didn't work. I looked over again, you guys, and I seen her taking her hands out of her pants and like wiping on the chair that she was sitting on. Oh no, I was like, don't do that. Look back down because she starts laughing again like really, really loud. So I look back down, try to just ignore her a little bit more. I look back up like seconds later and she's still doing it. So I look at the other instructor, I'm trying to explain to her like what's going on. I'm gonna have to take her to the bathroom because she needs to wash her hands because she keeps putting her hands in her pants. So I'm explaining this to the instructor and as I'm explaining it to the instructor, Meredith gets up out of her seat. And when she gets up out of her seat, I look at her seat and there's a period spot on the cushion. I'm like, oh shit. And then it clicks for me like, Oh, she, this isn't, she, she didn't just start her period, she's having a behavior right now because she's actually wiping the period blood on the couch. Like that's literally what I just witnessed. It like clicked for me that I just seen her do that. So I'm like, okay, I can't wipe her up right now in the library because all of this stuff is in bus. I can't leave her in the library because she's laughing profusely, really loud, creepy, like ah ha ha, like just like so evil. And I coated my chicken with Parmesan and a little bit of breadcrumbs. And I'm about to put this in the oven along with my bacon wrapped asparagus. So like I was saying, I couldn't leave her in the library because she was laughing like super, super freaking loud. So I was like, okay, I have to get, I was telling the other instructor, I have to get her into the bus with me. That's where all this stuff is. That's where I'm gonna be able to control her, contain her for the time being before we have to go back to program from the library. Honestly, we're only at the library for like two hours, so it shouldn't have been that long, but it literally felt like an eternity that I was with this girl. You can't touch or grab or defend yourself even at the program, that's what they tell you, like you can't defend yourself against the clients if they do attack you or do something to you. So I wasn't touching her or anything, I was just kind of like guiding her out of the door towards the bus lady. I get to the bus lady, good thing it was like one of the bus ladies that I really, really liked. Cheers. Ask her for the bus key to get into the bus to contain the situation. And she didn't want to leave the one other instructor with seven clients in the library while she helped just me and this one other client in the bus. So I was like, I got it, let me just go here, let me go to the bus, I have my phone if anything goes wrong. I get the key from the bus driver, I get Meredith to the bus. She proceeds to keep putting her hands in her pants and I am telling her like, are you having, I'm trying to like help her not think about it. I'm like, are you having cramps? Can I do something for your cramps? Maybe you're trying to touch your stomach. Let's just touch our stomach on the outside of our pants. So at this point, I get her into the bus and I'm like, okay, stand here. I'm just going to get into this cabinet right here and grab the wipes. And I couldn't even get all the way, the cabinet has a lock on it, first of all. There's wipes and like everything that you would need, everything that I would need to help her clean herself up and be there for her gloves, everything that I needed was in that cabinet. So I got her onto the bus, I'm like, wait, gonna get into this cabinet? No. Um, she proceeds to sit down. I'm literally like in the cabinet like this and I see her sitting down and then I'm like, Meredith, don't sit down. I'm trying to get in the cabinet or, and then I'm still trying to get in the cabinet or whatever and I come over towards her and she has her pants halfway down and she's literally grabbing onto the back side of the seat in front of her in the bus and she's like wiping all of her period blood all over the bus seats. And I'm, woo, and I'm, girl, it's taking me back right now. Like I can't, um, okay. It was hard for me because 
you can't yell, you can't be physical, you, I couldn't throw up, I was the adult in that situation. I, and then I go over to her and I'm like, stand up, stand up. So she stands up. And this whole time you have to remember that she's like laughing really, really loud at me. Like um, evil, scary, like, ah, like super, super loud laughing and stuff. And she's proceeding as I'm trying to like tell her to stop, trying to help her like get her all cleaned up. She proceeds to put her hands down there like wipe herself down there and then lick her fingers. Um, she would wipe her, she was wiping her hands down there and wiping it all over the seats and I'm like trying to talk her out of it, trying to help her. I'm trying to call my program, I'm trying to call my boss, like someone needs to come get her because I can't do this. Like I, I don't know what you want me to do, I'm not allowed to touch her. I don't want to touch her, there's a lot going on in this fucking bus and I'm by myself. So I call my boss, Meredith starts putting her hands in her pants and coming after me. Like wiping and then like walking towards me, trying to put it on me and like do all this stuff. And I literally was like throwing up in my mouth. It was so nasty. I had no idea what to do. I felt so much anxiety. I felt really, really bad for her because she was literally putting it in her mouth. Like I don't, I, I was taken back. I never in a million years thought that that was gonna happen. I had seen, I changed diapers. I, I dealt with all that from ages 22 all the way up for a full year. I was already dealing, for almost a year I was already dealing with whatever feces or whatever discharge, whatever I had to deal with. I was dealing with it and I was not complaining. And then this happened and that really took me back that I had no control because there's a system put in place that you have to follow to take care of the people that they want you to take care of. And they don't give you good enough instructions on how to do that under their guidelines. They didn't want me to touch her. I couldn't help her in any way. I just had to sit there and watch her eat her own period blood. And it was terrible. It was an experience that I never want to go through again. And I'm ready to get this story come out so I can just not talk about this anymore because it's so nasty. So she's super freaking laughing at me, trying to get it on me, wiping it everywhere all over the bus. When I say that she tried to smear it on me, I mean like she was close to me and I had to dodge that shit. We're in a little ass bus. I'm on the phone with my boss. My boss hangs up and I basically am just in this bus with her for at least, at least 15 to 20 minutes waiting for someone to come get her or waiting to get a hold of my boss, then waiting for my boss to get a hold of, hold of the bus driver that was in the library because obviously I couldn't just leave the bus and go inside to get help. I was stuck in the bus with her. I had to watch her. If I was to leave the bus, she definitely would have got out of the bus and left. Like, there was no control over her. So I called my boss. My boss called the bus driver that was in the library. The bus driver comes out. And then when the bus driver gets out there, her and Meredith already had like instances together so the bus driver really knew what she was in for and she was not playing that shit like she was like no sit your ass down she was like you need to sit down and stop because this is too much uh, dude i got off the bus so fast when i tell you she got back i was like i have to like i have to throw up like i need to throw up so after all that like screaming laughing all of the mess that's just like everywhere all over the bus fucking makes my stomach hurt I go back into the library with the other instructor and the bus driver takes Meredith back to program. So the bus driver ends up taking Meredith back to program and I have to casually go back into the library like shit isn't going down outside. Um, I have to go in there and I have to help the other instructor still take care of six or seven other clients. And we have to sit there and wait until another bus driver from the program can come and get us because obviously the bus that Meredith was on, nobody can get on. So it takes us at least 45 minutes from the time that Meredith left back to the program. So at least 45 to 60 minutes to get back to the program. When we get back to the program, Meredith, she is still on the bus, fully undressed, completely undressed with my all the bosses, the bus driver, she's in there going to the bathroom, peeing, standing up, just peeing, um, kicking my bosses, hitting my bosses, spitting on them, yelling at them, laughing the whole time. 
and I'm watching this from the outside of the bus, but I'm like, I was literally just in there with her and that was literally gonna be me in like two seconds if I didn't get someone else to get in the bus with her because the more that when that individual talks to her, the more she'll go. So she literally just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. She was peeing in there. She was throwing her peed on period clothes at the bosses, at my other, at the other instructor. It was a lot. After that, she did end up getting picked up and she never came back. Anything that the bosses could honestly say to me was, go take a break if you need one. Go get some fresh air and cool off. Literally the best thing. You need to invest in one. Hit up my reward style to see all my kitchen babes. They had no real advice for me and even though that this one incident, I didn't leave after this one incident, I still worked there. Um, so this wasn't like the main reason why I left that job. But this had a big part to do with why I stopped wanting to be a caregiver at all. Um, from what I've seen at the program, like even if I wanted to make as much change as I want because I didn't agree with so many things, that was almost, it's like impossible. The system that they have put in place is literally, it felt like to work against the clients and the people that worked for them. It just, nothing about it felt, felt right and I've come to now realize that it's that's the system everywhere. The system everywhere sucks like that for caregiving. Pretty much from what I've seen. After I was still actually working there, I wanted to get a second caregiving job. I felt like I was literally only working at the program from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then I had the rest of the day to do nothing, so I wanted to get a second job. So I applied for another caregiving um, local program, but instead of being a day program, it was a program where you went to their house and you hung out with them, took care of them, and did all that stuff like at their physical home. And the first job that I went on for that program, it was terrible. I was honestly really, really scared. I had my job interview. They they clearly seen me. They seen how big I was. They seen that I was a female, 18 or 19 years old. I go to this job for the first day. So when I get to the house, there's an instructor there, the client I'm supposed to be taking care of, and the client's roommate. The client lived on his own. His parents bought him a house, and then he, had like a friend roommate that also lived in the house to like be his like guardian or whatever but he didn't take care of him so the ins other instructor that was there was like yeah this job's super easy he does everything by himself he cooks he cleans I remind him to take his medicine you might have to go up to his bedroom and tell him to clean it up a very simple task around his house my this guy the client that I was working with was like this much taller than me and then the other roommate that lived, that lived with him that was completely okay was like this much taller than me. Like he was super freaking tall. And I don't know about you guys, but when I'm a female and when I'm already super small, when I'm around people that are taller like that, especially men, I obviously am more intimidated just because I have to break my neck just to even look at what they're doing. I have to look up so far. I'm in this house with these people and the other instructor's telling me like, you don't even have to stay all night because I was supposed to stay from like 5 p.m. to like 9 or 10 p.m. He was like, you don't even have to stay all night, but you could leave early. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like this job seems super cool, super, super easy. I'll be having a good time. And at the end of that night, like nothing happened. I literally just sat on the couch, but I was so uncomfortable and I did not feel safe at all. For one, the roommate, they had no ties to. So, the roommate could have done anything to me and they have no record of him. It, their client is the only person that they have record of. And even their client was more of an aggressive person and I had to be in the house with these two people that I had no idea it was my first day. The other guy sat there and talked to me for like 10 minutes and then dipped out. And that just went to show or prove to me that I couldn't work in the caregiving community that I wanted to work in like I thought I wanted to but when you work hands-on in the field the programs and the rules that are set up to help the clients really don't help them or the people working for them it feels like the whole system is built to work against you those two instances are why I would say that I don't want to work in the caregiving 
build anymore. I have come to a realization that I have a new dream job and that is literally to be a work at home mom. I do want to be a caregiver still, but I want to care for my own family. I get such great pleasure literally from just taking care of my family, like feeding them dinner, taking care of them, cleaning the house. I have pleasure in making my family happy and I can make money while I do that and so that's super amazing. So whatever I can do to make money while I'm able to take care of my family at home is what I'm gonna do. Whatever my current interest is, is what I'm gonna do. That is my dream job, just doing whatever I want to do. Like I wanted to share with you guys the reason why I'm not doing my first dream job, which you can even go back and watch the Q&A that me and Brennan did and I literally talk about how I want to do that and how I love elderly people and I always have loved elderly people and that's not going to change. I still love elderly people. I still love going to the homes and checking up on them and like having buddies. I think that's super cute and I will continue to make sure that my kids go out and help in the community too in that way because that's something that I do genuinely feel like it helped me with learn so many things and that job gave me so much more patience than I already had. I was literally a full-time nurse, it felt like, at the program. Like I said, I learned how to change feeding tubes in the stomach. From the stomach, I was feeding people that, that only ate parades, just like a bunch of things. It was a lot. I'm really happy I did it. I'm really happy I got that experience and I'm glad that that was one of the only physical jobs that I'll actually have to go to because I will be working from my house. Yeah, I'm gonna go check on this dinner and I'll see you guys back when it's done. The key to the melt in your mouth chicken for me is to put some extra Parmesan cheese and breadcrumb and then we're gonna broil the top of the chicken until it's brown and girl, do I tell you it's gonna be bald. And now we wait like two to three minutes and then everything's gonna be done. Make sure that you guys let me know down below if you still are enjoying my cooking content. We're in a new kitchen, so I don't know. I personally was like, I cannot believe when people were telling me that they wanted more cooking videos. So I'm like, I'm not a chef. Like, I mean, I like to cook for my family, like I said, but like, I am nowhere near a chef. So let me know if you guys liked today's video. If you guys liked, the little mixture that I did of story time and cooking. And look, I got to wear my cute little apron and I would love to have another reason to buy more cute aprons. This is the aftermath of my melt in your mouth chicken and asparagus wrapped bacon. So, like I said, this is the melt in your mouth chicken that we love. We literally eat it. When I first made it, we ate it a lot for like the month, that month after I found, like found the recipe. It's so good, you guys. As you guys seen, it's so easy to make. All right, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching today's video. It was a really good one. Like I said, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button because it really will help me out and I really, really appreciate it. I love all this. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.